Hello, hi. In this video, we're going to be looking at transformations. Let's start with the basic idea. In our game, we might have some thing, some data representing some sort of object, in this case, in this example, a triangle. Then um, we hit it with a transformation and it produces a new set of data called the image. Now, with the object, we keep a permanent copy of that in memory. With the image data, we could do whatever. We could draw that on screen and then destroy the data. That's perfectly fine. Um, so the mathematical structure which represents a transformation is a matrix. Um, we can see here an example of a general two by two matrix. Um, we have this here. It's two by two, we multiply it by a input vector, which is two by one. The inner dimensions match and the dimensions of the result are the outer dimensions. We can see over here, it's a linear combination of the X, Y points that came in. What if we want to uh, multiply lots of transformations, do lots of things? Well, in order to compose transformations, we multiply a what's called a stack of matrices. Let's say we want to do transformations one, two, and three. Well, first we take the point A, hit it with the transformation T1, and that produces A dash. Then to get A double dash, we get the image A dash and hit it with T2, but that's also equivalent to going um, T2 times T1 times A. And we can see that here with a triple dash as well. So um, the order of multiplication of matrices matters. New transformations are stacked onto the left of that. So it's kind of, maybe kind of the opposite of what you would expect. How about some examples of um, common transformations? Well, the simplest case is a scale transformation. Personally, I don't use scale transformations much because uh, non-uniform scaling can be bad for the normal vectors. You might need to do some more complicated math to recover them. But as a mathematical example, it's fine. So we take X, we want to send that to A times X and B, uh, sorry, Y wants to go to B times Y. The transformation is represented with this matrix with A and B on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal, and we can see by the multiplication that that produces the desired result. Something like rotation, on the other hand, is a little trickier. So um, with more difficult transformations, a good idea is to look at what happens to the standard basis vectors i and j, where i is the unit vector in the x direction, j is the unit vector in the y direction. We can draw this um, out rotating i and j by an angle of theta counterclockwise and this shows us what the components of i dash and j dash are we can see i dash goes to cos theta for the x sine theta for the y and then j dash is a little trickier but the horizontal component is sine theta and that's pointing in the negative x axis so it's negative sine for the x component and positive cosine for the y component. Then we can write this transformation out. Uh, this is using column notation. So we have uh, t and we hit i and j individually with t and that produces the columns i dash and j dash. That's the image. Then we put in the um, vectors as before and we can see that on the right hand side the matrix ij is actually really the identity. So it's a bit of trickery. We got a formula for the um, rotation transformation. Translation is a little bit trickier. What we want to do is we want to pick up the vector xy and send it to x plus a, y plus b. We can write this as vector addition, but there's a problem with that. And the problem is that's not multiplication. So the way we get around this is we introduce a new dimension, just one. So we have x, y, and one. Now, if we write out this um, transformation for a translation and we do the matrix multiplication, we can see that yes, this has done the right thing. It sent us to x plus a, y plus b, and we're keeping that one in the end in case we want to do any transformations, any translations later on. 
So that's good. We've got a translation, which doesn't use addition. It uses matrix multiplication, just like everything else. Let's look at an example of um, transformations. A common application is what's called the model view projection stack. Stack, of course, meaning series of transformations. We'll start with some models. For my example, I'm going to have a cylinder model and a person model. They will be defined in what's called model space, where the origin of the coordinate system is a local origin to the model. And then we want to put them out into the world somewhere. So for instance, we might want to put our cylinder and draw it in two different locations. Well, we'll need to transform it. We'll need to translate it using two different translation matrices. For the person, we're first going to rotate them around their origin, so they're facing the right way, and then translate them into the world. Uh, this transformation is called a model transform, and this sends the objects to world space. The next step is we want to get the perspective of the camera. In other words, we want to make the camera the origin. Uh, this is what's called transforming into view space with the view transform. Um, we have what's called normalized device coordinates where x goes from negative 1 to 1, negative 1 being the left, and 1 being the rightmost end of the screen, and y similarly. In OpenGL, positive 1 is the top of the screen for the y coordinate. However, in Vulkan, it's reversed. Negative 1 is the top. Or I could have that the wrong way around. I think I think that's how it is. Okay, um, then we need to hit this with a perspective transform. This will take the view space and transform it into screen space. Um, also, if we look at view space, the cylinders are both the same size, even though they are different depths away from the camera. So we have a perspective transform, which um, transforms things appropriately and gives us a 3D view. Let's have a look at an example, another example. So um, let's say we're playing a three-dimensional game and we're looking at it from the top down. So I'll do three boxes, world, space, view space, and screen space. In world space, we can see the map and we can see that the uh, player is not the center of the world. Um, so to get it into view space, we will need to, first of all, subtract the player position from every position on the screen. So this shifts things around so that the center of the screen is where the player is. We then need to rotate um, inverse to the player rotation. So um, if the player turns left, then actually the player kind of stays still and the rest of the world spins right around the player. Okay, now the way this is set up, we need to get it into screen coordinates. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that the X coordinate is how far to the left or right an object is, a point is, and the Y coordinate represents the depth or how far away it is from the camera. So we will basically have an idea of what a wall would look like. And then for each end point, we divide its height by its depth from the camera. So we can see the points which are at a lower Y value are larger, and then the points which are higher Y value are um, smaller because they're further away. And yes, my drawing is a little bit dodgy here, but that's fine. Okay, this sort of thing is fine if we're living in the 1990s. However, um, in reality, um, we don't do this by hand. We use matrix libraries. There's a few of them. In Python, we have uh, what's called NumPy or Pyr. So NumPy is for vectors, pretty much. Um, and Pyr is an extension of NumPy uh, for matrices. By the way, is it Pyr or Peer? I don't know. Every time I hear that, I think of the Swedish black metal project Arcanum. In C++, we have what's called GLM, GL Maths. Um, the cool thing about this is you're actually using the same math library as uh, what runs on the graphics card. 
which I think is cool. Um, I don't know about GLM. What does it remind, remind me of? Maybe a hip hop underground crew. Um, so, 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 um, a few basics. We're working in 3D coordinates, so we want to use four dimensional vectors. That's X, Y, Z, and one, so we can do translations. Um, we also, all of our transformations need to be in four by four matrices. Now, if we're doing some 2D stuff as well, it might be beneficial just to keep everything still in four dimensional vectors and pass in zero as a Z coordinate and just deal with it because um, at least GLM pretty much does not do two-dimensional transformations. Everything's in four dimensions and three dimensions, you know what I mean? Um, okay, so then we have to work out our model view and projection transformations. Now, in the example before, oh, well, first of all, for model transformations, we can just use the standard transformations as defined by the matrix libraries. Um, so they have routines to create rotation matrices and everything. We don't need to do that by hand. Um, for the view transformations, in the previous example, I kind of fudged it, I kind of did it by hand, but there is a routine. These sorts of matrices are so common, there are routines to create them. We have what's called a look at matrix, and the general parameters, it may vary from library to library, are uh, the point that we're looking from, the point that we're looking towards, and a vector which represents the camera's up direction, just to do any um, any other transformations, like if you're looking at an angle, like tilting your head. Anyway, for the projection transformation, again, this is so common that there's a um, routine for it called the perspective matrix. Um, parameters here are the width of the screen, the aspect ratio, the near Z and far Z. So anything closer than near Z will not be drawn and anything further than far Z will not be drawn and the field of view angle common values there are like 45 degrees or 60 degrees. Um, the model transformations are loaded in by an object once per draw cycle. So if I have a cylinder object and I want to draw the same model three times on the screen, I will need to load in three different um, transformation matrices per frame. Uh, the look at matrix is stored by the camera and that's loaded in once every frame because you load it in and you draw everything, then in the next frame, the camera might change its direction or position. So you'd have to load a new one in. Um, and the projection, depending on the type of game you're making, you may only need to load that in once. If you're playing a shooting game and the player wants to zoom in or out, well then your field of view angle will be changing. And so you'll have to change that. Otherwise, you only need to load that in once. Anyway, that was it for now. Hope you had fun and yeah, bye.